Authenticity. What does it mean when it comes to musical inclusion? After delivering almost 30 youth music funded projects and being involved as a, either a workshop facilitator, project manager, bid writer, evaluator, or even an observer, my understanding of authenticity got challenged and almost changed when I came across a group of young people that wanted to do a project that included them making drill music. If you don't know what drill music is, according to Wikipedia, it is known by its dark and violent lyrics. But for me, it came in the picture of 36 young people on a project that all wanted to do drill music. Now, because I knew a little bit about drill music, I thought, right, okay, let's see what we've got here. We had a jamming session and every single one of their lyrics was absolutely that. It was dark, violent, misogynistic. Um, it was promoting the stabbing of each other. It was promoting gang culture. And then after listening to their lyrics from a jam session, the perfect project manager in me challenged them straight away and told them that we can't have this kind of profanity in a music project that is funded. And almost immediately when that was challenged, young people were ready to leave the project and not even engage with it because they weren't allowed to express their own creativity how they wanted to. So whilst me there telling them that this kind of music is not good for a funded project, it's not good for things like radio play or giving them any, any opportunities on stage, etc. One young person came back with that one liner that I still remember from today, which is our lyrics are the illustration of our lives. So straight away I started thinking, right, okay, when it comes to authenticity for these young people, what does it mean? How will these young people be authentic when it comes to expressing their lives, their opinions, their or whatever they're expressing through their music? After a series of conversations that I had with my team, we thought, right, we're gonna allow these young people to make these kind of songs, allowing them to express themselves freely, and then we pick up the conversation later on. And once they recorded a series of songs, that's exactly what happened we started talking about the business of drill music we started talking about radio play which resulted in us talking about gang and knife crime which would not have happened if we shut down this project their views on drill music not didn't necessarily change or the motivation towards doing drill music didn't necessarily change what did change is their wordplay their lyricism and how they approach the songs and how they approach this violence in these lyrics those were more polished and they was getting more professional for for me, it became quite clear that the first thing that I needed to do when it came to authenticity is give them access first and then allow the development to happen later. Now, this is obviously a different approach to many of other projects that I've delivered in the past. And, and like I said, you know, it was the first time my views on allowing violence for a young people's project that is funded by an organisation, it was challenged and it was challenged to its most extreme sense but it was great to know that it allowed the young people to express themselves freely, then use that opportunity to develop them, where even one young person got the opportunity to perform at Royal Albert Hall. So my views on authenticity is that to allow a young person to express their views through their music, whatever they may be, and then allow that opportunity to create a pathway for progression, for change, for development. So I'd like to end this with a series of questions for myself first and then for other practitioners out there. Does our bias on musical teaching get in the way of young people learning? Do we teach young people the music that we think they should learn or do we actually know what the young people want to learn in the first place? How often do we consider a young person's perspective when it comes to planning music projects? Does that reflect on the session content? Are our music project demand-led or supply-led? Do we design our project activities that are relevant to the young person or do we find young people that are relevant to our project activities? And the last one is, which has been like circulating in my head for a few years now, is how long will this project last in the life of the young person after the project's over? What is the project's legacy?